Welcome back to the vlog, guys. Welcome here to Port Moresby. Brad and I are heading back up to Garok on an hour and a half flight. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So NG is coming up, oil pressure is coming up. I want to reduce our fuel, fuel's on. Watch the ITT come up. We just had to shut down about a half hour ago, so be a little bit warmer. 680 looks like. Let's see, start coming down below 80. Then we'll flip on our alternator. It's on the yellow for a second. Box bus. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and call up for our clearance heading back to Garok at 12,000. Jackson Ground, November Tango Zulu requesting Tau's system Garoka. test, okay. When that says it right as you're trying to hear somebody. November Tango Zulu from Ground, ITC clearance 64 cruise 1 2000, code 0353. Departure 64, cruise 1 2000, squawk 0353, November Tango Zulu. Right, transponder code 0353 and 0353. All right, so he's given us 12,000, so, and we're just gonna put 12,000 in now. And when we get over to the runway, or might say level off at 2,500 or something like that, but for now we're just gonna put in 12,000. Okay. Jackson Ground, November Tango Zulu, requesting taxi. November Tango Zulu. Taxi number two. Uh, taxi holding point runway one four right time one three. Taxi holding point one four right number two. November Tango Zulu. I get our landing light. Taxi light on. Jackson Tower November Tango Zulu holding point one four right ready. November Tango Zulu. Jackson Tower line up and wait runway one four right. Line up and wait one four right. November Tango Zulu. Number Tango Zulu, runway one for right, maintain runway heading, contact with airborne, clear for takeoff. One for right, runway heading, clear for takeoff, radar airborne, November Tango Zulu. All right, so I'm gonna just hit my heading bug, remind myself to do runway heading. We're 33 degrees out, so 15, 20, 14, 70. 15, 20. Ignition, condition flaps, 20 fuel and harnesses. This is complete. Speed's alive, there's 714, climbing slowly. There's already our rotate. All right, once we get over here, we'll clip over to Jackson, or correction, yeah, Jackson Radar. Jackson Radar, November Tango Zulu, passing 500 on climb, 1, 2000, runway heading. Remember Tango Zulu radar, not yet identified. Maintain runway heading, stand by for a turn. Maintain runway heading, no for Tango Zulu. Sure, I'm squawking. Yep, 0353. Remember Tango Zulu verify level. 850, no Tango Zulu. Remember Tango Zulu, you identified. Maintain runway heading and stand by for a turn. Runway heading, no for Tango Zulu. I'll go bypass. Niners, I'll leave our landing light on for the time being. I'm just going to hit heading mode just so that I'm not, if I, like I get busy or something or I'm not paying attention. Autopilot's going to at least fly runway heading. I looked at the weather before we headed out. Looks like there'll be just about as much as clouds as we had coming down here for this time. Maybe a little bit more once we get up to the Epcad area in Anulo. I think by then those clouds will have built up a little bit more. Officer Zulu, fly heading 015. But I think that um, it's going to be fairly nice all the way back. We're getting back before all the rain starts. Not sure how long she's going to have us come out this way. November Tango Zulu, you can expect the turn approaching uh, 4,000. Expect turn around 4,000 over Tango Zulu. Well, then. I don't want to get too far out over the open ocean. Yeah. Without anything. Although we do have a 20 knot headwind down lower, so. 
Remember Tango Zulu, when ready, make a right turn, pilot intercept 298 radio. Right hand turn, pilot intercept 298 radio, November, November, Negative Zulu. Alpha Tango Alpha, really 6,000. 6,000, Alpha Tango Alpha. All right. So basically that line heading out of here, that's the 298 radial. So pilot intercept, we're just going to turn around and connect to it around in this area probably, just so that we're connecting to it before it's all the way out to start. Heading 320 is going to be basically the reciprocal of the runway. So right now we're just basically almost paralleling the runway. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit this here, heading nav nav. That way I don't forget, so once I connect to the 298 radio, it will automatically connect to it, just so I'm not fat, dumb, and happy, just flying along and then Sierra Lima, pass on through it. Interesting with all the diversity we get from the from pilots here. The accents? Pilots from everywhere, yeah. Yeah, there, there are pilots from everywhere here. You don't get that in the States. Oh. No, not, not like here. That's not the same. No. If it's a perfectly clear day, what I'll do is, on my way out here to start, then I'll just ask for a direct to Garoka. Okay, Tango Alpha, descend to 2,500, you're clear for the 14 ILS. Descend 2,500, clear for the 14 ILS, Alpha Tango Alpha. Because we already know there's going to be a lot of clouds, we'll just stick with our, our flight plan. Even when we are coming through here, that's where all that icing and a um, little bit of just sprinkles we had earlier. So if it's already showing lightning strikes, it is. then it's definitely going to be building up. Okay. So for the viewers, if you're not a pilot, we're going to keep the power in. Bro, whiskey, Charlie, Even though we've leveled off, we're, we're keeping the power in until we are at our true airspeed. Basically, the fastest our airplane is going to go anyways, then we start reducing it. So here we are, 159. And we're just almost cresting 130, so 160, so pull our torque on back to 1270, and then it'll level off at 1250. I can get it there. There we go. And then take a little bit of rain running. 1011. maintaining 12,000. No, we're Zulu. Tango Zulu. All right, so we just got to go up. So we're down 20 feet from what we just were. So we'll just do one click on that without adjusting anything, and it'll go 20 feet up. Did you click? It's right here. So rather than just hitting vertical speed and clicking it up, if you just do one click, it will go 20 feet up. It's kind of slow getting there, but it, it will get there. Anyways, we'll go ahead and pick this video back up once we get closer back into Garoka, because I think that's going to be a little more exciting than just droning along for the next hour. We are about 30 minutes out of Garoka now, and well, we're just kind of going in and out of some of these clouds. Looks like we have some rain coming up here around us, but I think for the most part, we should probably be able to stay out of most of it anyways, but it's a nice day. The clouds haven't really built up that high, so it's still a really nice, smooth IMC flight. And actually put in Turabo here. If we aren't, oh, we might clear out. I mean, before I waste my time putting it in there, let's see if we punch out right here, because we might. If we look like we'll be IMC until then, then what we'll do is we'll put that in and go over there. Uh, no, we'll probably have some more clouds. So probably what we'll have to do is we'll put in Turabo, because I don't think that we're going to be able to stay VFR anywhere up there. So we'll just put in our next um, IFR reporting point. AYTR. Turabo is another airport. Go now. Just put it in here, and you can see it kind of just goes around there because we've got a big mountain right over here where the kind of where the A is. So typically the clouds are just going to build up a little bit more over there. It looks like the, there might be potential some holes up there, but we'll just see. So, the one two zero nine or November Tango Zulu. Zulu, We'll switch now, currently a new low at this time, 12,000, and no joy, um, a 1207 at this time. Never mind, we'll be monitoring, though. I think we should request estimate Goroka. Estimating Goroka time 03. I think we should 12,000, send by for traffic. Never mind, we should. I think we should 12,000, or for traffic. Never mind, we should. 
We'll actually just continue on until we get up closer to here and then we'll connect to that track over there. That way we'll be on a direct track. Yeah, I was just looking at where the mountains are. Because if we go any right of track, we're gonna be closer to that mountain. Yeah, they're the over MSA by Sindeni area. So see this right here? Um, there's Marawaka and Sindeni. They're over. They're all the way over here. Okay. So these mountains here are maybe around eight or nine thousand. Okay. And these mountains here are at eleven thousand. And then from here on up, they're at like eight eight thousand, as far as on that track. But yeah, the nearest one that's tall is quite a ways away. Probably right at Chirabo, just past it, maybe a few miles, it will just open up into the Groga Valley, I'm assuming, because that's the way it always does it. If not, we could drop down to 10.6 all the way up to Groga. It does look like it's better if we go over here. Yeah, we'll go that way. You're altering the heading instead of putting on nav just so it's a gentler turn. That's right. Just because we're coming up to the boxes, I'm just kind of doing two or three clicks at a time, just so that it's a smoother transition, whereas if I just uh, hit the autopilot, it would just jerk really fast and try to connect at a 30 degree angle. And then once I'm just about there, then I'll click it onto the autopilot okay. to connect with it, and then it doesn't really adjust at all from where I've already done it. And it's a little bit more gentle. Yep. All right. What we can do, see this right here? We've got a big cloud here, and they got a little bit of a blue spot if we wanted to. Just to keep, I mean, we're like really close to it then, but we've got maybe that small little cell right there. We could just, we could just tra um, track for that little blue hole right here in front of us. And it's where two clouds are together, and it's probably gonna be a little bit smoother transition if we just go right through there, as opposed to right on the edge of these clouds. If it's showing a little bit of yellow and red, and you can kind of see like the walls of the clouds are a little bit sharper. If we get right on the edge of that, that's where it seems to be always the roughest. Because it's like usually when you go into a cloud, it's the beginning and when it kicks you out of the cloud, it's the roughest. So if we can just go right here on this edge of it, then and then cut back over onto our track, might find it's a little bit smoother ride for everybody. This is where it'd suck if you had to just stay here for like an hour and a half. It just be mentally fatiguing. And even your body, body too, just all these little tiny bumps, your body's like trying to like correct and stuff. And you don't really think of it, but by the end of the day, you're so mentally and just physically exhausted just from trying to like keep your body up and straight and keep the plane coordinated as it's trying to kick it all around. It's just it's so annoying. Looks like we're past that. And now I'm gonna just kind of start clicking right back over. Hey, look at that. Already breaking out. Perfect. So we'll just continue on this track to Tarabo because it looks like that's going to be the easiest track. It looks like we're even seeing all the ridges up there towards Tarabo. At this point, let's go ahead and put our descent down into Garoka. Um, we'll do 5,600, actually 5,100 feet right all the way down to the touchdown zone. So we'll go to 500 feet per minute. I don't know if that's going to work because typically it starts you way up here by Tarabo, but if you do 500 feet, it actually works better if you hold it and then kind of come down a little bit steeper later. Because the mountains at Tarabo are up to 8,000. So unless it's nice and clear and you can go around the mountain a little bit easier, but we'll, we'll see how it is once we get a little bit closer. This is the valley I was telling you about earlier, how I think, oh, it's gonna be open right here. And sure enough, that's kind of right where that end of the cloud is. And there's the valley going up. It's almost always clear right here. And it's almost always cloudier over there and then further on over there. So the reason being is there's a big mountain, there's Mount Michael right over here at 12,000. So all the kind of the clouds spill off over here and they go almost up to Tarabo, sometimes a little bit further. So sometimes if you track up over this way and around Tarabo, you can keep a pretty nice smooth flight going in. And then sometimes we might actually have to make a descent a little bit sooner. And then head in kind of below coming in through here around maybe 75 to 8,500 feet below all the clouds. Otherwise what happens is we get stuck in more clouds up here, but then we don't punch out until way up in here, and then we have to make a quick descent down into the valley. All right, so now you can kind of see down there a little bit, right underneath all those clouds. Huh? And that's where uh, it might be easier to head on down now, 
rather than waiting until it to go down. So I'm just going to go ahead and start now. We'll go down to like, let's say, 8,000. And we'll head over kind of to that, kind of the low spot where you can kind of just see underneath the clouds a little bit. Radiant string three, November Tango Zulu. Probably didn't hear me though. Yeah, this is again really typical is trying to get down before because if you keep going, those clouds, like I said, will go all the way up to the 15 miles of Garoka. And it's sometimes it's it's usually easier if you just start your descent in here, kind of level off around 7,000, 7,500, cut through the low spot, and then once you get into the Groka Valley, it opens all up. Otherwise, it's just really bumpy usually through here, and then you just have to make like a thousand feet per minute to get back down into Garoka, or do a bunch of circling when you could do a nicer descent this way. They get coordinated. And I'm just going to have to slow down or something and increase my descent so I can make sure I get underneath these clouds. All right, see, now you can kind of see what I'm talking about, how now we can see right all the way down into the Groka Valley. Okay. Once we get 100%, yep, or clear of these clouds, then I'll just adjust this and maybe even level off for a second. All right, it looks like we're going to for sure clear that. Vertical track. Alright, just turn that all the way down to 5100, which it already was. Crocodile, November Tango, Zulu. 15 miles to the south, passing 8000 on descent. Your circuit 01 and copy the departing traffic for the call call. November Tango, Zulu, Crocodile, Avenue, and True. 35 right, wind light and variable QNH 1016. That report final. Afternoon, radio 1016, report final, 35 right, no, Bremer Tango Zulu. Afternoon, right. All right, 1016, 0161, 0116, and we'll just come in for a straight in. What we can do is we can hit our OBS here, turn it to runway 350, it puts a nice extended center line, and then I'm just gonna make a couple clicks over so that I'm kind of joining it's straight in, or straight in for like a five mile final or something. Where, where are you going, airplane? There we go. Wasn't on heading mode. <laughs> I was just immediately trying to join over in with that because I didn't have it on heading mode again. Okay. It was oh, on nav. It was on nav, but when I hit OBS and moved the line, it goes, oh, the line's over there. Well, I need to go over and connect with it. All right, landing light on, taxi light on, pedo heat's off. Bypass on. Fuel and selectors, good. Taws enabled our V-Rep. My goodness. For 6100, so let's say 68 knots. Our final. Lights and inlet is done. If we have to go around, it's power up. 20 degrees flaps, pitch for 73 knots. Maneuvers required, reset ITD to 740. Up and harness we'll do here shortly. Broken Tower, November Tango Zulu, 5 mile final, 3-5 right. November Tango Zulu, runway 3-5 right, clear to land. Clear to land, 3-5 right, November Tango Zulu. Prop and harness is done, we'll do flaps in a second. Do full flaps. Well, it was nice that we got out of Moresby when we did. We beat most of the bad weather. I think it'll be a lot worse later on in the afternoon, that's for sure. So it was nice that we could beat most of that. Yeah. Well, thanks guys for taking the time to watch. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Give the video a thumbs up if you guys did enjoy it. And uh, if you're interested in finding some sunglasses like these, I've got them on my website. Check those out as well as these checklist boxes. 
backlit ones as well as this one I have right here that I'm using. And welcome here to Garoka. And now we're pretty much done for the day. Alright guys, see you next time.